Our next guest is an Emmy-nominated actor and musician. He stars in the series Big Shot, which is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. He also hosts the podcast Snatching Sinatra on Wondery, which is available now. Please welcome back to the show, John Stamos. How are you, John? Hello, Seth. Nice to see you. It's very exciting uh, news. You are a new father since the last time we saw each other. Yes, and uh, I was. We were inspired by you. Had your your baby was born in the lobby of your uh, of your apartment building. Yes, but that was my wife's fault. Yeah, we tried to have our kid in the at the bowling alley, but um, <laughs> it's closed. Got to the, the laundry mat was open, so we went. Back. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you just ultimately you got to find a place that'll make for a good anecdote down the line. Is this my good? What's the good side with that Kristen and Dax were? It's this great. Is, I think you're really good. We've all you have always been known as uh, having no bad sides. John. Well, I think. No. this is my Rob Lowe side. Oh, yeah, that is very Rob Lowe. It, and this is my Scott Baio side. So you <laughs> you choose. Rob Lowe, please. <laughs> Beth, may I just say that I just love you. I, I've been a fan of yours for a long, long time, as you know. But during this last year and a half, you've, you've just upped your game so much. And it's just, you were just the guy to turn to. And, and I appreciate how great and funny. And, and I was so happy that you were on and leading us. And uh, thank you, that's all. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I, I felt incredibly lucky to have a show like this. And I also want to thank you because I, I think a lot of us have turned uh, to podcasts and you have a wonderful one and a story that I did not know anything about that came across um, your um, uh, desk, I should say, in the 80s, which was about the right. kidnapping of Frank Sinatra's son. How did, you, how did you first come to know about this story? Yeah, isn't it a crazy story? A lot of people just don't even didn't even know it happened. I was uh, through my relationship with the Beach Boys. I met Jan and Dean, the other surf rock duo, and I was at a, a fair at the Orange County Fair. I remember early in the '80s, and Dean Torrance turned to me and said, uh, "Say, Stamos, you produce?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." I didn't know what producing was. He said, uh, "I loaned uh, the seed money to my best friend to kidnap Frank Sinatra Jr." I was like, "What?" And he gave me this, look at this. He said that Barry Keenan, the mastermind, uh, who kidnapped Sinatra Jr., wrote this in jail and gave it to Dean. He said, I have the rights. Do you want to do something with it? I didn't really know what to do with it back then. And a few years later, I was like, Dean, what happened to that, that story of your friend? And he said they tried to get it made for many, many years, but Sinatra didn't want it made. He didn't want it talked about. In fact, Barry talks about in the podcast, he talks about um, the Sinatra put a hit on him about three times. At the, and it went on for like 50 years. Finally. These guys were so old, the hitman, Barry talks about the hitman had him in his sights and then his colostomy bag broke and you know, he missed him, which I think, I think in the mob, that's a, a, a rite of passage, right? Like to get to that age where you yeah, have a colostomy bag. Yeah, very hard because yeah, it's yeah. very hard to have a long career in the mob. So if you can get right, to the right. colostomy bag stage, that's an accomplishment. But this is It's so a crazy story. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, I always pitch it as like the, you know, the Marx Brothers meets the Coen Brothers or something. But truthfully, it's about a you know it's about a men mentally ill man and being able to do it as a podcast. I've really had the time to sort of dig into his psyche and try to figure out why he did this. He was at his lowest, this guy Barry Keenan, and he was overlooking Catalina Island. And he said God's voice came over on the radio and told him to kidnap somebody. And then he said the radio wasn't even on. Um, and his first choice was going to be Bob Hope's son, but he thought, well, oh, that's too patriotic. Uh, I should go for Sinatra's you know kid because you know, the mob and Sinatra's, you know. So the third time he, he, his third attempt was the day that Kennedy got assassinated. So the whole nation's like this, right? Sinatra's like this, you know, his relationship with the Kennedys. Um, and he, he gets up to, he said, well, that's in Dallas. I got a schedule to keep. He gets up, he gets up to Tahoe, gets uh, Sinatra Jr., brings him down the hill, stashes him in the valley over here, and then realizes, oh, man, I left the gun, I left fingerprints, I left my fake mustaches, I gotta go back up. So he asks his girlfriend, who was a virgin at the time, to drive him back up. She gets so turned on, she has sex with him when they get there overlooking the crime sure, scene. Sure, who wouldn't, um, yeah. And, and he had, to, right, that happens. Yeah. And he had to, you know, the FBI was onto him, so they disguised themselves as, as honeymoon skiers. And but in a blink, at this moment, he's got, he's the most wanted, most wanted man in America. He's got the FBI, the CIA. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Everybody wanted to get Sam G. and Connor called Sinatra and said, let me do it my way, Frank. Um, and he's going down the bunny slopes in Lake Tahoe. So It is a crazy, a crazy story. And then I guess at the time, uh, Frank Sinatra uh, probably didn't know that you were maybe one day going to tell this story, but you got to meet him. Uh, yes. This is you and Paula Abdul and Frank Sinatra. Where did you see him? Uh, this was in Orange County, and I got to bring my, my family. I, I think we got to meet him. I don't think I, Frank... It was more of a 
a straight up, uh, it was more of a Paul Abdul fan than mine, but <laughs> we, 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 uh, we called ahead to see if we could meet him. And they said, well, if, if Sinatra wants to meet you, he'll let you know. Like, what, was that, you know what does that mean? So Rickles goes on. And I didn't know him at the time. I, you know, since I, I was very good friends with him, as you might know, over the last 15 years. Um, so uh, Rickles goes on and then it's intermission. And someone says, Mr. Sinatra, we'll meet you now. So we get to go back. And my dad was the biggest Sinatra fan. So it was a really important moment for me. And we go back and, and my mom had this story for years that Sinatra uh, tried to hit on her on her on her wedding, on her honeymoon. And she says, no, Frank, I'm a married woman, you know. So at this concert, she first of all, we get back. She, she, she's, she's into a couple of drinks. She beelines towards Frank. Jilly Rizzo, who was Frank's guy, you know, tackles, grabs my mother. And I'm like, don't kill my mom. Let me get a picture of Frank first. Then you can beat her up. But let's get the picture. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty great moment. And then at the end of the concert, um, so, uh, Rickles comes back out. And you know how they introduce the um, celebrities in the audience. Oh, Tony Danza, Paul Abdul, um, it's John Stamos. And I was sort of embarrassed to stand up. And then he said, oh, he's probably in the cheap seats. In fact, he's probably in the grass. In fact, he's probably smoking grass. And Sinatra grabs the mic from Rickles and says, smoke one for me, Johnny. <laughs> I was like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, I also want to talk about uh, um, Big Shot. This is really exciting. So you, uh, you play sort of a Bobby Knight-esque coach who uh, mm -hmm. gets kicked out of the NCAA, goes to coach an all-girls school. And one of the really exciting things about this is you have been getting very uh, good critical response to this show, uh, good critical response specifically to your performance. And I wanted to bring that up because the last time you were here, we talked about how that maybe... Uh, wasn't the case with Fuller House, and you were kind enough to let us read you some of those reviews. Let's just uh, remind you real quick. A Hollywood Reporter said, it's doubtful that there will be a more painful 2016 TV episode than the Fuller House pilot. I mean... <laughs> There's a point where nostalgia becomes more like necrophilia, and Fuller House immediately crosses that line. Netflix's Fuller House is like a porn parody without the porn. <laughs> 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 that was great. You that was one of my most famous, uh, favorite talk show moments ever. We were, we were so good together, you and I. We had chemistry. We, we had chemistry. Back. And look, you're good without me, too, because I just I do want to uh, read some of this. Entertainment Weekly, oh. Kristen Baldwin said, Stamos scores in heartfelt dramedy Big Shot delivering dry wit in sweet sentiment and equal measure. Time Magazine, that's a big one. Judy Berman, Big Shot is surprisingly lovable sports drama. Stamos, reliably likable. It makes it easy to root for a high-strung bully. That's great. Esquire, another big one. Brady Langman. Stamos gives one of the most heartfelt performances of his career in... Oh, son of a gun. What? What happened? One of the Fuller House ones slipped in here. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's New York Times. James, James Panawozik. The series begins as a sitcom family reunion. It becomes a self-conscious, dated, and maudlin reminder of the ceaseless march of time and your inevitable demise. So he liked it then. I think he liked it. Yeah, we only have that part. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he bounced it was, back. <laughs> it was very. Um, it was alarming those reviews, and they weren't fake either. And then yeah, then Big Shot has been just getting love letters. It's David E. Kelly show, and uh, I just I'm so proud of it. And then you know we're on the bubble, as they say. So you know who knows? All right, Maybe well, the I hope you get right off that bubble where you where you just. I hope you get on the Rob Lowe side of the bubble, which is where we all want you to be. And uh, thank you so much, John. It's always a delight to see you. Thank you, Seth, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Big Shot is streaming now at Disney Plus, and Snatching Sinatra is available on Wondery and wherever you get your podcasts.